Hey guys, we are in the basement and today we're going to do another tech episode. This is going to be kind of like Arcade 101. Today we're going to cover a very basic skill, but a very important skill. Now I know a lot of you guys out there already know all about this. I know you guys are soldering pros, but you know, to some of the guys out there, it's kind of like a big mystery. It was to me. I mean, honestly, I was really intimidated to start soldering on these games and the equipment and the boards because I didn't want to screw stuff up. You know what? I soldered when I was in high school. I took high school electricity but that was like 20 years ago. That was like the last time that I soldered. So I was a little scared to do it on these games because I didn't want to, you know, this, this stuff can be expensive. You don't want to ruin it. But you know what? If you are in this hobby, if you collect this stuff, at some point or another, you just got to kind of be a man and get over it and just, you got to solder, man. If you want to cap the monitor, you know, and basically what is soldering? You know, well, soldering is basically you're heating up this wire here. This is called solder. Um, this kind that I buy is a 60-40 mix. It's 60% lead and 40% tin. And that's right, lead. So you don't want to lick this stuff. Um, and it also puts out some fumes when you're doing it. So when you do this, you want to be in a well-ventilated area. Um, personally, I like the fumes. But anyway, so solder, the basic idea here, here's a PCB. This is an uh, MCR power supply, uh, which basically goes in all the, a lot of the belly went, uh, uh, belly uh, midway games like Tron, uh, Discs of Tron, Tapper, etc. Here's a power supply. Um, I have a little rebuild kit over here, and uh, I'm kind of in the middle of rebuilding it. And so I, what I need to do is desolder and resolder on new components. And so the idea of soldering is basically this: on on this side of the board, we've got all these components. We've got resistors and capacitors, um, diodes, and, and socketed chips, and these little kind of Molex connectors. And these are all held onto this board with solder and if you look on the back here this side is the parts side um, you can see all of the different parts and the other side is the trace side and basically these are kind of like connections or wires that are connecting all the different parts together and they're all held on with solder uh, they're all soldered to the board and they're basically what you want to do is you want to put the part through the holes after you desolder them and you're going to melt this metal it's going to turn into a liquid with your soldering iron, and you're basically trying to adhere it to the metal. Now, what's important here is that we want to heat up the part first and not the solder, and then push the solder onto the part, and it'll kind of suck it into it when you remove the iron and when it cools. So hopefully that's making sense. But anyway, let's, let's back up a little bit. Let's talk about the equipment and what you need to solder. Now, first things first, you got to get a good soldering iron. Uh, you you got to trust me on this, too, because... Um, if, if, if you think you're going to be soldering a lot, um, if you have a few games, or if it's something that really interests you, I really suggest that you invest in a good soldering iron. Now, when I started doing this, I went to Radio Shack and I bought like the cheapest $5 piece of crap I had, and I was having a miserable time soldering. Um, I mean, it was it was just it was a miserable experience. It was not working right. I was burning stuff. Um, I thought it was because of me. Turned out it was because of the soldering iron. Um, I remember then my dad gave me one of these WTCPT wellers, um, and this is an automatic temperature control soldering iron. My dad used one of these when I was a kid, like in the 70s, because he like repaired electronics and stuff. So, um, so I pulled out my dad's old weller, and suddenly. I could solder good. I could solder well. Um, and so basically what I'm saying is it, you got to get a good soldering iron. Eventually my dad's broke because I dropped it. So I replaced it with this one. Um, so this is the one that I like. It's a Weller WTC PT. Um, it's an automatic temperature controlled one. And this thing has never let me down ever. The tip is always at the right temperature. Um, they have other ones out there that have adjustment knobs on them um, with temperature gauge, gauges and you can adjust the exact temperature you want and I, you know what to me that seems like overkill because this thing is always the right temperature um, I'm not lifting traces I'm not burning up the board um, this thing works great for me and you know what like I said my dad used this one for like 20 years this same model um, so you know what I'm following in his footsteps um, and also I want to talk about is the tip that I use um, the tip that comes with this uh, out of the box is a little big for my taste uh, so the tip that I use um, is a Weller, and it's a PTP 
PTP7. It's a 132nd inch by 0.8 millimeter conical tip. Um, and I find this to be the best tip for just about everything I've done down here, um, from soldering wire to soldering, uh, you know, like large components like capacitors and resistors. And I'd even use this to replace sockets on ICs. Um, uh, sockets on ICs, it gets a little hairy. This is maybe a little bit too big, but uh, for the most part, this thing works really well. Um, I really recommend this tip. Um, and when you're soldering, you know, the tip's gonna get dirty. You wanna clean it. Um, this thing out of the box comes with a sponge that you have to keep wet all the time. It's a real pain in the ass. Um, so I picked up one of these little Hacko or Hako, whatever you say. 599B tip cleaners and what you do is as you're soldering as the tip is getting dirty um, you come over here and you just kind of push it in this and it's just like a bunch of like metal that's all like shaved and, and almost like uh, I don't know, like like spaghetti or something that's in there and you just stick it in and the metal grabs all the hot solder off the tip and cleans the tip for you um, so I really do like that too much better than the sponge before I had this I'd always had to go upstairs and get some water and keep the sponge wet and the sponge starts burning it's a major pain in the ass um, and then you're also going to need some solder, um, which is right here. Now, I use this, what they call super solder. Um, it's 60% lead, um, which, you know, it, it's kind of hard to find these days because I think uh, the environmentalists don't really like this too much. Um, but this is the true definition of solder. This is what people have been using forever. So definitely try to find the 60% lead solder. Um, I use the one millimeter diameter, and this is like a rosin core solder, I believe, that has like basically like a little bit of a uh, flux inside of it. Um, another thing that you should have on hand is some flux. Um, you get this at Radio Shack. Um, I don't really use this that much. I, I use it when I have uh, like a filthy connection I'm trying to solder or desolder. I use it when something is really on there. And this basically kind of cleans the area as you're soldering or when you heat it up. Um, I, I don't use the flux that much, uh, but because the, the solder has it kind of in it. Um, but I have a friend who's an electrical engineer that, that basically uses this every time he solders for every connection, no matter, how, no matter how clean or dirty the board is, he always uses flux for everything. All, I mean, the, there's flux all over his board. But me personally, I rarely use this and don't have any pr trouble. I, I only seem to use it though if the board is just a disaster and it looks really filthy because this really will clean the joint. Um, um, another thing you're going to need is a solder sucker. Um, this is the one that I use. This is called a solder put. Uh, S O L D A. P-U-L-T, solder pull it, or whatever. Um, you, they have smaller, this is kind of the name brand one. It's about 20 bucks. Um, you can get smaller versions of this at Radio Shack. Um, I use this for all my solder sucking needs. Um, it's basically kind of cool. It's, it's a pump. You push down like this, and you push this button, and it kind of sucks up the solder as you're heating it up. Um, this is a very important tool for desoldering. Um, you can also get a solder braid, which is, which is kind of like a piece of wire that's all braided it up. Um, I find that solder wick or braid to be kind of a pain in the ass. Um, I much prefer this. Um, you can also buy an expensive uh, desoldering iron too um, that does it for you. But personally, um, the solder pull it is the way that I like to desolder and this thing is fantastic. Um, also, I like to have on hand is a, a, a set of uh, flush cutters here. Um, after you solder a new capacitor resistor to a board, uh, the legs will be hanging off the back of the board and and you want to kind of cut them off and I use these flush cutters to do that. I also like to have a pair of really nice pliers on hand while I'm soldering too. Um, this helps you kind of get into tight places to hold parts or remove parts um, that are too hot to touch by hand. Um, and actually this set of crescent uh, tools, it's a flush cutter and these kind of really nice needle nose pliers, uh, you can get them at Home Depot. I don't know, like 15 bucks or so for the pair. Um, I These are my favorite, favorite, favorite uh, cutters and uh, pliers of all time. So anyway, I'll tell you what, let me set up the tripod and we'll kind of get in on the board here and kind of show you guys how to solder and desolder. 
Okay, we are back. You know, I went and got a, a junk board to kind of just kind of demonstrate soldering on. And I actually encourage you to do the same if you want to practice your soldering skills. Um, this here is an old, this is a Sanyo 20EZ monitor chassis that was actually destroyed um, in shipping. And I, I keep it around for parts because uh, you never know when you're going to need like this little test switch or whatever. Um, so if you need something to practice on, you know, go to Goodwill or something, get an old radio, get an old toy, get something something that's electronic and and crack that thing open and, and get the town on it so alright so here we have our circuit board um, like I said before this is our solder side this is our part side um, so if we want to replace let's say this capacitor right here um, what we want to do then is turn the board over and we're going to desolder these two connections right here which are holding that capacitor on so let's go ahead and do that um, and I've never really done any video close-ups before, so hopefully um, you guys will be able to see what's going on here without any glare or anything. Um, Alright, so we're going to get in on this. Wow, look at that. I got zoom. Magic. Okay, we're zoomed in. Hopefully that's okay. Um, so this is the part that we want to remove right here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually, this is I'm going to show you guys something, like a little trick too. Um, if you've got an old board with old solder on it, sometimes when you want to heat it up, because it's been kind of dormant for 20 years, it's not going to want to play too nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add solder to each of these joints before I desolder them. And it's going to actually make my life a lot easier when I'm desoldering with and sucking the solder up. Um, okay, so I've added some solder to each of those joints and now I'm gonna heat up the joint with my soldering iron and I'm gonna take my little solder sucker and just like that I sucked up uh, one side of it right there and I'm gonna come over here and suck up the other side and let's see what's going on. Um, Usually it takes a couple tries here. We still got some solder on here. Um, a lot of times after you do this, um, you can kind of wiggle the part out. So let's see if we can do that. Yep, and here it comes. All right, so we have removed the capacitor there by desoldering those joints. Now we want to replace it. Um, now this capacitor is a very common type of capacitor. Man, look at my thumb. Can you believe that? You want to know what happened here? This right here, this black on my thumb, I smashed a chair into my thumb and caused that. And then yesterday I was cooking and I grated my thumb. I was grating cheese with a cheese grater and... It's slight. Look at that. Can you? Look, what a this train wreck I am on video here. Anyway, <laughs> okay. So the capacitor's off, and this is a very common-looking capacitor for an arcade monitor. Um, you'll find these in old TVs. You, you'll find them in virtually all electronics these days. Um, this particular one is a 160 volt, 100 microfarads capacitor. They comes in all shapes and sizes, all different voltages. Um, 100 uh, microfarads. That's basically the level of capacitance. Um, and the and basically what these are, these are kind of like um, this is my layman understanding of it. Um, there's basically liquid in these. Um, a, a kind of conductive liquid that kind of holds a charge and really I shouldn't even be doing that right there because you you do risk a, a risk of shock um, when you're touching a capacitor like that especially a large one that can hold high m amounts of voltage uh, so you know even though the the, the, the the game is off or the monitor is off these things can still hold a charge and you, you got to kind of be careful and you might you know with the small ones like this, I think the risk is very low. But on a large capacitor, you can get a nice little zap. Um, and you can usually just short the two leads together with a screwdriver to kind of get the charge out of it. But anyway, um, these are the kind of capacitors you're going to find all these monitors. Um, usually when, when people say a cap kit, you know, I want to do a cap kit on a monitor. What they mean is replacing the capacitors. Um, and I recommend that if you're going to do it the first time, you don't go out and try to buy these one at a time at the Radio Shack or online. Just go to the real Bob Roberts. Uh, just Google that, the real Bob Roberts. He's, he's kind of an old school guy. He's got a really old fashioned website, but he's got capacitor kits for virtually every monitor known to man, Ar arcade monitor that is. And you tell him what, what, what kind of monitor you have and he'll hook you up with a, a bag full of parts um, when you need to do a cap kit on a monitor. And uh, you know, they're usually like seven bucks. So it's really cheap and really convenient to do it that way. Okay, anyway, we have our capacitor off. Now we need to replace it with the same value. And again, if you 
you had Bob's, uh, you know, uh, little cap kit, uh, it'll tell you what value it should be. And you can see we took this off from location C410, and you'd look at the little chart and it would tell you which one to, to, to put in there. And you'd always want to double check that's what you removed, what, what Bob's suggesting you put in. Um, for the purposes of this video, though, we're going to just grab what other, whatever, because this is a junk board. I don't really care what we're putting on here. So, and I just kind of want to show you guys how to put the part back on. So I'm just gonna grab any old capacitor from my bag of miscellaneous parts. And uh, so let's go ahead and uh, just throw this baby on there. Now, uh, the one thing to note about capacitors that is actually pretty important um, is that there is polarity to these capacitors. Um, the nice thing is though, it's kind of an industry standard, um, you'll have a kind of a black band on here for the negative lead, okay? And another nice easy th way to figure that out is on here, see negative? Also, if you look, the longer lead on here is positive, okay? The shorter lead on a capacitor is negative and it's also marked with a black line. Now you don't wanna mix these up, the polarity up when you're putting it in because when you power the game on, these will actually pop, okay? So if you look on the board, most boards will actually show the polarity on the board, okay? Now we remove this one right here and uh, this one's actually a little confusing, but uh, so right here is a black line, so that's where our negative is. So when we put it back in, we're gonna have the black line line up to the black line like so, okay? And so now we've got the new capacitor on, and now if we turn it over, we've got these little legs sticking out like so. And I'm just gonna kind of bend one of them back to kind of hold it in place and leave one erect there. And so let's kind of zoom in on that. Okay, so we have our lead sticking out here. So we're gonna go ahead and solder it. Um, so what I wanna do, and by the way, if you got a good soldering iron, this will take like a half a second, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my soldering iron right here, and I'm gonna put it on the pad. Uh, the little metal pad is, is kind of the what is around the lead. I'm gonna push the soldering iron on the pad and on the lead at the same time. Just kind of hold it there for a second. Then I'm gonna come in with my solder, and I'm just gonna melt my solder by touching the pad and the wire and just kind of lift up, and that's it. We have just soldered that on, and that's really all there is to it. Um, and now we're gonna go ahead and do the other lead, like so. And we're gonna touch the wire and the pad at the same time, and then go ahead and put our solder on it, the connection, and just kind of lift up. And that's it, and kind of inspect our work when we're done. Now one thing that I do sometimes, just to be kind of really ultra safe, if I'm doing something and I really don't want to mess it up, and, or just, you know, if it's something that took me forever to take apart, or if I'm just not sure of my work, I will actually take my multimeter here, and I'll put it on continuity. And when you put it on continuity, what that basically means is that if you have a connection between point A and point B, like so, it will beep, okay? Now, what you can do, if I touch the lead, okay? Now, if I were to look at the board, and let's see where that trace goes. Uh, so that trace, so this right here, if I follow this, it goes, looks like over to here. So if I were to touch here and here, I should get a beep, and I do. So because I'm touching, the wire, the lead that's sticking out and not the solder, and then also the next joint next to it, I know that's a good connection. I know that I was successful in soldering right there because I'm getting continuity. Um, and then if I do the same over here, and I know that that is also good. So I was successful in soldering that. So now it is safe to take my flush cutters and trim this, okay? And when you trim it, you don't wanna go all the way to the solder. You wanna cut just above the solder, okay? And also what I usually do is I will clip all the leads at the end. And actually here's another little tip for me to you. Um, after I put all my capacitors in, what I do is I come in with a Sharpie and I double check my work, okay? 
And so I look here and I, I look at this capacitor and I check the polarity to make sure I lined it up right, okay? And I see there's a line here on the board and a line on my capacitor. So I know that I successfully put that in there and I'll put a little black dot on it. And that way I know I tested it. I, I, I double checked it. And I'll do that for every capacitor that I replaced. Because nothing sucks more than doing all this work, putting it in the game, and then having these capacitors poof, pop. And then you don't know which one you put in wrong. And it's just, it's a nightmare. It's better to double check your work before putting the game back together. Um, and I do that with the marker to double check the polarity. And then sometimes if I'm really suspect of a connection, I'll take my multimeter and put it on continuity just to make sure that the, the, the connection between the two is beeping. Um, so I think that really kind of covers it. Um, just remember, you know, the tip here is that you want to heat up the part and not the solder. Basically, I'm heating up the part first. The part is getting hot. Um, the pad that, it, that it's going through is getting hot. And I'm just kind of touching the solder. It doesn't take much at all to the, the pad and the part at the same time. And it melts real quick and the parts kind of suck up the solder. You pull your soldering iron away. You wait a second or so. It cools. It hardens. And then you're done. Um, so it's really not that hard but you know it really having a nice soldering iron is key to this um, having good temperature having a good tip on your soldering iron um, and uh, just you know take your time and, and don't be too too quick doing this stuff um, it's you know once you do it a couple times and have it under your belt you'll find that it's really not that intimidating um, but having good tools and stuff really makes a big difference too. Um, you know, honestly, if you're serious about doing it, don't cheap out and buy the crap like at Radio Shack because it's going to be frustrating and you're going to actually learn slower because you've got crappy tools. Um, and I, we're only talking about maybe a hundred dollar investment here. Um, and if you could fix three games or some monitors, um, you're, you're ahead of the game. You're actually saving money at that point. So, all right, guys. I mean, that's really it. Hopefully. It, Hopefully that all made sense, you know, and uh, you guys kind of understood what we're talking about. Um, but I'm definitely going to be doing more kind of how-to tech videos soon. And actually, something bad happened here um, while I was doing that video. Um, it's kind of dark down here because... Uh, I'm blowing circuits, and uh, I'm not really sure what that's all about. I, you know, I had some issues before with my uh, breaker box, um, and I actually have uh, two, actually, I'm sorry, four 20-amp circuits feeding this basement, and uh, something's going on with my box right now because I'm popping fuses, and nothing's changed, so a little concerned about that. But anyway, uh, I want to thank you guys for subscribing to my little channel. Um, you know, if you haven't subscribed yet, now's a great time to push that little subscribe button. Go ahead and click that. I release videos every Sunday, um, and if I can, I'll re release them sooner than that, too. But um, go ahead, click subscribe. Every Sunday, you'll get a notification when I re release a video. And, of course, check out my podcast at VideoGameOutsiders.com. That's VideoGameOutsiders.com. Um, we do a live show every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern at AllGames.com. And also, go to my website site johnsarcade.com where there is a forum yeah a forum that's right you can chat with me and other like-minded collectors there check it out anyway guys uh thanks for watching my little video and hopefully you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time later <laughs>